Okay, my name is uh, Ricardo May. Um, I'm a computer linguist, and I also have my colleague with me, Susan Nylund Skog, who is an ethno ethnologist. So we're the twins here, uh, and uh, we are going to talk about our experiences of interdisciplinary collaboration in making cultural heritage accessible for research. Uh, um, and this is in a project called the Tiltal project. And as you can see, there are uh, more people than us too, and there are also uh, more organizations. But I will uh, go to the next slide and let uh, Susan uh, say something about the research problem. Yes, uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, the archives where we work holds more than 25,000 uh, hours of speech recorded during a period of over 100 years. Uh, these recordings are uh, heterogeneous and representing a multitude of speakers, topics, strongers and localities, as well as physically reflecting the changing recording um, techniques over the years. And they are rarely used um, because it's an enormously rich resource. It is uh, um, their lack of convenient ways of locating and accessing the content. So the research question that we worked with, the overall big one is, how can these recordings be made more accessible for research in the humanities and social sciences? And uh, today we're just concentrating on one case study, the one that I myself is working with, and, and where I try to see how this recording has been made into written documents and cultural heritage um, uh, in the archive. So uh, um, how is this process? Um, I want to... Uh, uh, illustrate this process of how recorded stories are transformed into cultural heritage. And what we need to do then in the project is to locate and access the content in the audio sources in effective ways. Yes, next slide. So the proposed solution, uh, uh, it has two parts, we can say. One is to apply speech technology methods uh, to the recordings, uh, and you can read more about that in, in, in uh, uh, a paper by Falgren from 2019. This is uh, more of a uh, uh, acoustic analysis uh, uh, way way of of uh, doing a, a yeah. To, to try to get to, to the um, to the, to the speech recordings, but we have no general speech to text technology. It doesn't work with with the standardized speech to text technology. So so we can't do that. We tried it, but but it's just gibberish. So another method that we used uh, and that we are talking about here today uh, is to use written sources uh, to find entry points to, to recording speech. Uh, so we have in the archives a lot of notes, summaries, transcriptions, subject catalog and recording logs, for example, that, that points to, to uh, a certain recording. And we, we have uh, worked a lot with trying all trying to find all, all, all these uh, all these uh, items um, and and uh, also uh, digitized them and and linked linked them to 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 the recordings and we call these we have a concept that we call them the bunches of, of related items that point in into uh, recordings for example in the subject uh, catalog the, uh, there can be uh, uh, they have, have written about what what's the content of, of a recording uh, from minute one to minute two, for example, they can talk about beer, brew, brewery, or, or something like that. Uh, and 
then we suggest and evaluate dig digital solutions in cooperation between language technologists and researchers. So uh, myself and, and mostly one of my colleagues, uh, Gunnar uh, and Susan ha have talked a lot about how he works and, and how, can, how he can make uh, uh, prototype solutions for, for that. So we can see that in the next slide. Uh, I don't, I, I will not talk about it that much, but, but on top here you, you see different kinds of, of uh, items that points in, into the, to the recording the sound uh, in the middle and, and below we have, have examples of, of uh, digital, digital solutions that, that, that links in, into uh, the recording. So we can have the next slide again and go into uh, talking about the collaboration experience. Uh, and one experience that we made is that these collections are very, very complex, more complex than, than, than we thought of from the start, and they are very contextual and, and sensitive in, in, in different ways and also part of, of practice this. So it's very important for us to, to have a close cooperation uh, to to understand these uh, uh, the complexity of the collections and and the practices of using it, um, and uh, another experience is that that building trust and, and common ground be, be, between uh, computer linguists and and uh, and uh, and the research just take takes time and and efforts. Uh, so we have had a lot of, of meetings and discussions and on-site observations and, uh, and uh, workshops and uh, Susan has also uh, written field diaries uh, so that we have read to, to understand how, how she works. And we have had uh, several hot discussion topics uh, like the sensitivity of, 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 of data then. Uh, and uh, how, how, how to deal with, with that, uh, and also discussions about quantitative and qualitative uh, approaches, uh, and also the, uh, the, the, let's say, humanities res researchers uh, think in, in visual front end, and, and the technicians think much about the technical back end. So we have, have had a lot of discussions about how to get these things together. So uh, one uh, big conclusion is that uh, usage-centered usage design uh, is not only to, to observe and model, it is, it's not just to, to go out there and, 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 um, and observe what, what Susan does and then go back to, to the computer and, and, and model it and, and, and make some kind of, of digital solu solution. It's, it's a joint step-by-step -step, uh, exploration that requires active interaction of, over longer time. And, and from that, we have, we have some recommendations and, and Susan can, can uh, <laughs> tell you about them. Okay, so as you see then, uh, we have tried to, to focus on five things that we uh, think is important. And, uh, and the first and maybe the most uh, important is that we uh, are involved and work together to begin with from the start and continuously, uh, as all the other papers has been uh, saying as well. Um, and I think it is also very important um, at least we have found it to get to know the larger context of the research process and in our case also of the collections and the archives uh, historically you need to know why and under what circumstances the material was collected and recorded and and the participation process is i think it's very important that we all participate on equal terms and uh, so that there is a uh, motive to engage and, and uh, discuss. Um, and that no questions are, are too simple or too 
stupid to be asked. Uh, and uh, we have also found that uh, focusing on easy cases um, is most fr most fruitful. And from there on, we can work with more difficult ones involving several aspects, like uh, the ethical aspects have been very problematic. And of course, as you all have said, make plenty of time and room for discussions. Thank you.